Welcome to episode three of Sarge Speaks, the podcast. I'm your host, Sarge Kapoor, and I'm thrilled to have you with us today. In this episode, we have a very special guest joining us, Hushan Fernando. Hushan is a renowned career performance coach based in Melbourne, Australia. He specializes in helping mid to senior professionals reclaim their time, energy, and peace without compromising on their performance or productivity. With over five years of dedicated experience in this field, Hushin has developed a profound understanding of the challenges faced by professionals in high-stress environments. He shares his expert insights on managing stress, maintaining a healthy work-life balance, and strategies to enhance personal and professional growth. Throughout our conversation, Hushin will provide practical advice and actionable tips that you can implement in your daily life to achieve better balance and efficiency. His approach is not just about managing time, but also optimizing your overall well-being. If you want to learn more about Hushin's work and his coaching services, be sure to visit his website at hushinfernandocoaching.com. I've included the link in the description below for easy access. Get ready for an enlightening and engaging discussion that promises to leave you with valuable takeaways. Let's dive right in. So in your journey of, you know, helping people to maintain a positive mindset contributed to overcoming challenges and achieving personal and professional growth, how do you do this? As in what's my method? Uh, Yeah. Um, What's your method? Um, You know, what do you guide people to build a positive mindset? Yeah, so there's there's two pieces to the way that I approach this, right? I believe um, there's when we're tackling any problem, any challenge that we have, whether it's in the workplace or in our personal life, um, I found there's two effective methods that need to be adhered to in order to come up with a well-rounded solution. One is to have an internal solution, meaning in a solution that targets mindset, regulating the emotions, and getting your internal state as clear, calm, and collected, and more of that nervous system regulation piece as well. Yeah. Coupled with the external solutions, so looking at the the to do list, the calendars, the the management systems that you use in your life to execute on the mindset that you currently have about life, um, and the things that you desire. Basically, I'm trying to get people to think about what they have in here, how to translate that out into their life through practical schedules. Um, to do lists and things like that so they can actually build the life that they want personally and professionally so that's a summary yeah so can you recall a specific instance where adopting a growth mindset led to a breakthrough in your career or personal development Mm, good question so many over my life i mean was the question whether adopting a growth mindset changed my life is that what you asked um, yeah, um, because a lot of people, um, especially in their younger ages, do tend to have a fixed mindset at times um, when they face hardship. And um, a lot of time when you change your perspective about how you view something, that can really be defining for what happens. So yeah. do you recall any specific instance where adopting that mindset really helped you or significantly changed an outcome in a positive manner? Yeah, I mean, it's the pivotal one that I tell whenever I'm doing talks, um, that moment that kind of changed my life, that rock bottom kind of place that sometimes we all find ourselves in and wonder like how are we ever going to get out of it? Um, I actually ended up getting bottled in a club trying to help one of my friends um, get out of a fight that they were in, um, that they, were, they also didn't want to be involved in, by the way. Um, I got hit across the eye and at the time um, people would be like oh my god that's a horrible story and things like that but I actually perceive it as the best thing that ever happened to me and the reason um, that is the case is because at that time my life was deteriorating in terms of my health uh, my relationships I wasn't present with people I was hanging around the wrong people Um, I was being the wrong person because I was around these people too yeah. Um, and my just overall confidence, happiness, nothing was working. And also I wasn't doing that well on the professional side of things either. My career wasn't going the way that I wanted. Um, I also was just not doing well in my studies. Like all these things were falling apart right? at that time. When this event happened, um, obviously I had to go to hospital, right? And for three days, about two or three days, I had bandages wrapped around my head or eye, and I couldn't actually see. 
Um, but I think life had a plan for me at that point. To, for the first time, I was actually with my own mind. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't absorb the environments around me. So all I had to do was think about how did I, yeah, how did my life end up here? What if I don't have an eye for the rest of my life? All these kind of thoughts, right, were flooding through my head. Yeah. And at some point, through all of this thinking, I, I concluded that it was my internal state that was responsible for the reality that I've created. It was my mindset, the orientation of it. It was my inability to regulate my emotions, to communicate them clearly and all of that. It had led to a life where things weren't working for me in every area. I just almost connected the dots as if by magic. Um, it was because I was with myself for that period of time, the three days, um, with nobody else really talking to me, just in the hospital hospital bed lying there, I was able to conclude this. And then it caused me to shift into a growth mindset from that point on, because I realized I was in a fixed mindset up till that point. I really thought life was happening to me. I realized life could happen through me if I change this and I regulate this. If I get my internal state clear, calm, collected, regulate my nervous system, and I learned how to do that, which I didn't know how to at the time. So I went into deep research mode uh, for years after that, you know, which has led me to the work I do now. Um, that's where it all began, that switch from fixed to growth. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's this quote, right, where it says, you are who you are for, I mean, the, the top five people you spend the most time with. So mm. yeah, it does make sense. A lot of the time, even though you don't really socially spend time with someone or just by just being around them, you know, it can really change your mindset of things. You know, you don't really have to be friends. You can be acquaintances and that can really impact you negatively. So it's really important to pick and choose who you interact with socially i would say not only just for you know um, adults but for teenagers kids alike um it's important to be your best self and do what's right for you and i i did i did underestimate the importance of putting yourself around the people that are right for you in the right season right um and you and also acknowledging you have to be right for them too um yeah. you have to play your part in all of this before i was like ah I'm around the wrong people. It's their fault. Rah, rah, rah. No, it was it was up to me to one say who do I want to be for people, and then attract those same people in return so they could be that for me. People who believe in you, people who support yeah. you, people who encourage you, people who are that support system when the world is happening to you on the outside. You can come back to them in community, talk to them about what's going on. Um, no judgment, uh, no shame, no guilt. Um, yeah. And get some level of service from being around them um think of it like a recharge station just coming back to those people that you trust um that trust you um and that represent safety in your life uh, in a way that you wouldn't feel as safe out in the world with people you didn't know yeah it's also like um great that you give back to them you know because they're gonna be there for you know your lows in life and they're also gonna mm -hmm. be there with your highs in life and it's in your highs in life where you don't leave them and you always stay by them by their side because um you know you're essentially like this pack of wolves you know you're gonna have to stick together and that's the entire thing you know just because you're better off now doesn't mean you're better off without them yeah uh, i mean yes there are going to be people who always do hold you back but if these people were there in your lowest point in life i believe they also deserve to see you at your highest point in life for yeah in that sense so it's, i would it's, I, I would oh sorry do you have another question oh uh, no no go, go on go on i was gonna make a point on that um i used to like be bitter or resent when people had an impact on me especially if i was moving forward from a platonic or romantic relationship in the past right um something i've learned uh, in age and as i've grown older is um to leave relationships that like with grace and even if there is bitterness at the end of them and whether they're a friend that you lost or a partner that you lost um yeah. to work yourself towards having nothing but love in your heart for those people once you've finally gone through the grieving process of letting go of the connection right because sometimes it can be messy uh, we're human beings we're imperfect um it happens um but then it's our responsibility to work on hey how, not just forgiving them but actually forgiving ourselves for anything we're allowed to happen to us yeah. Uh, for the behavior and the part that we played in that situation. I think people look too much quite often, as, at least what I've seen with clients, for forgiveness from others. 
But I always, I'm always about that internal state. Reflect it back, point the finger at you. Uh, that gives you control of your life. What can you control? Forgiving yourself. You can't control forgiving uh, others forgiving you. But inherently, if you do forgive yourself, if you do let go and you accept all the things that happened and you move past it, um, it does open up the space for the other person to do the same. And then that's actually how we end up getting the forgiveness sometimes that we're looking yeah. for is in letting go um, of the things that we're holding on to. Yeah, reflection yeah. is very important. It teaches us, you know, what went wrong, you know, what were our mistakes, you know, they don't have to be mistakes in general, but what's important is that we learn from them too. You know, we strive for um, improvement. Uh, you know, we keep pushing forward. Uh, yeah, we are going to make a lot of mistakes in life. You know, like you said, we're only human. Uh, it's part of the process of learning. So it's very natural to, you know, be it wrong. And uh, yeah, there's no harm in being at that as long as you reflect internally and assess, you know, maybe how could I be better? You know, um, how can I improve so that this behavior doesn't repeat again? And even in a leadership con uh, you know, context in the corporate world or anything like that, you know, mm -hmm. when you're working, you know, with their team, you are gonna make mistakes as a leader. Yep. But and 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 what you have to do is reflect not only with yourself, but as a team, work together, you know, and um see what went well, what didn't go so well, and how we can act on that didn't so well so that it can go into it went great the next time yeah um, yeah you, you made it you made a great point there about reviewing um i think part of the success process that people often miss is the review part the step back part the take a breather yeah. part yeah. um and this is I'm, I'm a culprit of this as well including a lot of people that i work with in in the professional sector um people often want to just push forward bulldoze towards that goal hit them hit them hit them but they don't actually take this time to stop look at what they did what worked what didn't work review um for fear of losing momentum so there's actually a fear of consequence that comes up, yeah. comes up for a lot of people around this yeah. um yeah and i love the points you made on leadership there as well leadership by um hierarchy is dying out and leadership by example is the future at least that's what i stand for and what i believe in um and that's what i try to embody again not perfectly sometimes um i can slip into the old and then even my employees and have to call myself out i um, have to apologize and then step back into um that new age leadership that we're looking for that self-leadership that we're looking to embody yeah. Um, that's really what my work is about as well uh, with people. It's how do we, again, lead ourselves before we learn to lead others better. Yeah, it's, it's extremely important that we do understand, um, you know, ourselves too. You know, um, uh, yes, uh, this also leads us to the point of mental health, you know, that we are a priority too. You know, we have to look after ourselves and uh, we cannot compromise our own health for someone else's health. You know, we have to understand that they're set boundaries and they have to be in place, uh, you know, enforced um, um, and enforced not in like, you know, in a violin or anything in that in that manner. In, in the sense that to, you know, just protect yourselves, to make sure that you are happy because it, it sounds selfish and narcissistic. But the priority in reality is yourself, your health. That That's the first thing. Right. If that it, itself isn't well. How can you expect yourself to behave equivalently with others, you know? So mm -hmm. it's extremely important that we do look after ourselves if a relationship isn't going well. You know, we step back, we reflect, is this relationship for me? Is this what I really need? You know, uh, yes, there are going to be, you know, quid pro quo relationships where you need to have them for certain instances. But yeah. if that's really detrimental on your mental health, you're going to have to reassess that if you really want to put yourself through this. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm not a mental health guy, so to speak. I am more like I, I approach it from just mindset, right? And obviously yeah. that, that takes into consideration things like that. But um, yeah. the point that you're making there, which I liked, is um, put it, putting yourself first in order to put others first, like having that be the model, Um and that does, and when I look at like, is this person right for me? I also look at, am I right for them? 
right? And yeah. I think there needs to be the balance of both perspectives there because we can often get caught in, hey, is this am I is this person right for me, 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 me? But what am I actually giving to them? Am I playing my part? Um, both have to be in balance for a relationship to be healthy. I always say relationship, no matter whether it's platonic or romantic, yeah. is two people contractually coming in to serve one another. Um, and if that is happening, then growth happens. And then as long as both people are serving each other mutually uh, without attachment of what they receive, uh, those are the best relationships. And that's how I look to found all my relationships, actually, uh, these days. Um, and if I find after a while, I do give people grace. I try to give people a chance. But if they're not re reciprocating after a while, naturally, you will find that the, the relationship will start to uh, disseminate because you're growing, 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 you're feeding into them. But if they're yeah. not feeding into the same way, are not able to level up with you, then um, unfortunately, that's just the way relationships work. They they die out, um, yeah. at least in my experience. Yeah, I mean, I've been a victim of it too, you know, myself, uh, where I have been giving a lot to people, you know, but, you know, relationships are a two-way street, you know. You can't just be going or giving, like you said, uh, when the other side is non-existent. You know, the bridge needs to be maintained, and if it isn't leveled, it's gonna fall apart and mm. uh, i myself have been a personal victim of it in the sense where i gave a bit too much when i should have you know come to my early senses and say you know this isn't really working um and if it isn't working and i have to be I have to be able to accept that that you know not everything works not everything always goes the way you plan it but what's important again is that you learn from it and yeah i've yeah. been able to catch myself early you know that ah uh, this is not exactly working this relationship that i thought would initially work um you know we're not leveled we are not on the same playing field uh in that mm. sense. and because of that um you know kind of need to step back and reevaluate you know if i really want to pursue this if i really want to put my time and effort into cultivating it or growing it um so that I can flourish later on yes sometimes you need to have that extra effort in but again, you just have to reassess that. Is this for you? And is this what you need? Yeah, I mean, I wish I had uh, my head on my shoulders the way you do at your age. Um, I definitely did not. I was I had to learn the hard way, unfortunately, and um, for a lot longer as well. It just took me a lot, a long time to let go of control, um, which is what I feel like you're alluding to in a lot of this. It's the more you're able to surrender just in life in general, things just start to fall into place. Um, and the reason I believe that is the case is because I believe life always has a better plan for us than we have for ourselves. And I've learned that very quickly. If I'm able to surrender, let go of control in every moment, surrender it to life, uh, just take the steps, plant the seeds, take the actions and trust life to fill the gaps. Um, even if it doesn't happen in the timing that we want it to happen or in the way that we'd like it to look, that's where real success in life starts to happen. That's where you start to uh, um, access the peace, but also the performance lens. Um, how do we keep that internal state peaceful so we can access joy, fulfillment, and all those internal state emotions that we want to achieve while also being able to pursue our goals in life, to meet our desires, to achieve success uh, in a monetary perspective, in a in a in a items perspective like houses and cars and things like that because people get caught in the trap i see quite often with the people i work with yeah. of chasing success in a monetary and a material um objective but yeah. then losing out on the internal it's like hey i'm sacrificing everything that's important to me in terms of peace and fulfillment and all of that yeah because i'm so stuck in surviving my days grinding through them just to yeah. make it to a goal that's only going to give me a hit of dopamine for one second yeah. um, to like get the next hit of dopamine uh, for yeah. the next goal that I try to achieve. Um, and really my work is called success without sacrifice, right? How do you succeed professionally, externally, out in the world, in your life, create the life that you want without sacrificing the things that are important, your health, your relationships, and all those internal state um, yeah. things that I was talking about, peace, fulfillment, uh, just a calm, clear mindset, a regulated heart. Um, that should be the ultimate goal for everyone, really. I believe um, the world would work better and everyone would have what they want. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, um, I've always been quote, uh, told this quote by my parents, you know, you shouldn't chase success. You know, if you work hard, if you hustle, you know, if uh, success is going to chase you, you shouldn't be chasing behind achieving, you know, or getting there. 
should be just working hard consistently because if you do work hard consistently, that effort is eventually going to pay off. Yes, initially, at the very initial stage, it's going to feel like, oh, there's nothing happening right now. But yeah. what you look at is mm -hmm. if you just zoom out into the future, it's going to be an exponential curve. And the more effort you put in, the more consistent you are with your goals, your target, you know, your relationship, you know, your work-life balance, the more quicker you are going to achieve what you want to achieve. Yeah, but what, what you're talking about, I mean, I've worked with over a thousand people on this one-on-one, -on -one, right, um, in both professional context and personally as well. People struggle to strike that balance. Um, people are almost desperate for it these days. I think yeah. in a world where our attention is being pulled left, right, and center, there's distractions more than ever. There's just overload of information because of the internet. People yeah. struggle to regulate and find a way to actually balance the professional with the personal. And on top of that, working from home has now become a thing post-COVID, right? So I yeah. think people, the lines are even more blurred for people. And I mean, partially, that's why I'm in a job, right? Because I think um, people are struggling to find a way to actually um, have the life that they want um, and feel good about it and enjoy it in the, in the process. Um, yeah. I think what you said there about, um, actually, it just slipped my mind. But the, the point I was trying to make there is um, if we're able to, find ways to slow down yeah. to, and you pointed to hustle culture. That's the part I was going to speak to. Um, society glorifies it right now. Um, I actually write posts on that, how society glorifies hustle culture. If we grind and grind and grind and push and push and push towards our goals, like we'll make it all of this stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm of the opposing thought. I'm saying, Hey, if we slow down um, while we're moving forward, like if we allow ourselves to slow down in that process, reflect, which is what I talked about as well take yeah. breaks, rest, um, and not not take a rest because we deserve it after achieving X, but actually just taking a rest because we, we can. We need it, yeah. Um, yeah, because we need it and reading our bodies and our mind and what it needs. Yeah. Um, that's where life starts to work. At least it, that's what's happened for me and the people that I've seen facing burnout, uh, facing all this all overwhelm and stress and anxiousness in their yeah. work environment. Yeah. Often the reason it's happening is because their mind is flooded with all these things, either um, all the tasks that they have to do in their day, what decisions they need to make next, or all these fear-based thoughts, uh, which is like resentment, guilt, frustration, worry about the future. Yeah. Um, and when your mind is consumed with that, um, how could you possibly slow down? How could you possibly um, yeah. not continue to hustle to the point you're burning out? Um, yeah. yeah. So is that this is where like I always say it comes back to this. Yeah. You clear then... that. Yeah, everything else will work. Yeah, and then if you are, you know, slowed down, it's gonna be much more slower than you would like. You know, uh, yes, you know that when if you don't want it to get to that burnout stage, because when you do get to that burnout stage, it will be so much slower than you'd actually like. Yeah, that hustle yeah. will just you know vanish. You're like, you know, I don't want to do anything anymore because you are so tired. You're frustrated. Your body, your your body needs that rest. Your mind needs that rest. You know, it's scientifically proven that you need to have rest, you know, like whether it's taking a day off or taking a couple of hours off just for yourself can make a true difference. Yeah, and, I, uh, I love the point you make there, right? It's a very simple thing. I mean, everyone knows it. We should rest. But, yeah. but here's the question. Why don't people do it still? Or why do people struggle with it, right? For yeah. those people that do, it's because there's there's an element of not feeling like we deserve to rest until we've achieved X. It's a real, it's an equation that's locked in the subconscious brain that a lot of people have adopted being like, hey, I need to keep hustling. Um, and when I hit the goal, I need to hustle again and hit the next goal. Um, there is no room for like, hey, I actually um, can rest when I want. I need to earn it. That's why if I don't complete X, Y, Z task by the end of 5 p.m. that I set out to complete, I feel guilty. And then I try to rest. But all I'm thinking about is the work that I didn't do. And now the more work that I'll have to do tomorrow. Right. And this is a vicious cycle students fall into. Because yeah. I've worked with young people as well, um, thousands of young people across schools in Melbourne, and I've seen the same thing over and over again when they tell me this. Yeah. And then professionals as well, like the biggest CEOs, the executives, the managers that I work with. Yeah. These are human problems, and it's not it's not defined by age. Yeah. Um, everybody's going through it. This hustle thing is just something we're born into because it's a society that's moving faster and faster and faster, and the pace is increasing responsibility yeah. increases as we get older and the time to get things done reduces. So yeah, 
what's going what's going to break right there's a glass ceiling that's going to shatter um yeah. if we don't do something about this uh regulating the mind clearing the mind releasing capacity in there to actually handle the load in our lives yeah um then we the 24 hours we're eventually going to burn and the burnout that you spoke about that's just stress accumulated in our nervous system over a period of time that isn't addressed if it happens for long enough if we just suppress the anxiousness the overwhelm the, the stress the worry the, the guilt all of that our nervous system just increasingly gets into a heightened state it stays there and eventually we crash because obviously we can't like the nervous system needs to reset and that it'll happen in the form of a crash yep. it'll happen in the form of an outburst it'll happen in the form of being short-tempered with your your family um, not being present with them at the end of the day and i see it over and over and over again yeah so you know we're, we're talking about continuous learning uh, so for aspiring leaders navigating the complexities of life, what's your mindset advice that you would offer them uh, to foster this resilience, uh, you know, and this continuous learning that we we're just talking about for growth? You know, all of this comes down to resilience. That's the key word here. If you're able to be resilient internally um, and develop that mindset, then um, when life happens, you're able to bounce back quicker. It's not about being invincible. Right? Yeah. That's what I tell people. Now, in terms of like how is it how to actually get the mindset right? Is that the question? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So what I, I teach people is um people are doing all these things like getting their to-do list right, delegating, um, productivity hacks, um, meditation, whatever it is, taking meds, like all these external solutions to solve what is actually an internal problem with that mindset, right? Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, sorry. And the, pro the problem here is if the problem is within our minds and the root of all of our challenges is in here, but we're trying to apply all these solutions externally, it's going to act like a Band-Aid over the real problem. Now, the real problem here, what I say, is not about the challenges themselves, but our reaction to the challenges, okay? Yeah. How we react when we're put in a high pressure situation, when we're put in a stressful situation. Person A over here and person B over here, same deadline, same workload, um, same pressure coming from their bosses. Yeah. Person A is cool, calm and collected, methodically getting the work done until the deadline and they're okay at just doing their best and trying their best and making sure that they stick to their plan. Person B, stressed out of their mind, feeling the grind, um, like pushing through, not taking breaks, comes home, not present with their family, um, suffering health-wise, mentally too. Um, the, what's the only difference between those two people, Sarish, in their approach? It's that one is, you know, taking a step back. You know, one is yeah. giving time for themselves, their families, their loved ones, and that is what's really also helping. Yeah, it's allowing exactly. them to survive. You know, it's that group, you know, that you need to also give time back to, you know, in your highs and your lows. You know, these exactly. are people that you need to spend time with to show that, you know, you love them and you're going to mm. be there for them. And, yeah. you know, time is limited. It's not something that you can, it's not going to last forever, this time that you have with them, you know. Uh, like you said, who knows what the plan is for how long, this person's time is so true. you need and, to take a step yeah. back and you know you cherish this because yeah no one's going to remember your you know you spent 11 hours a day working uh you know at night in another 10 or 20 years but the people who are going to be remembering this are your family they're going to your love yeah them. and yeah yeah man no, exactly and it's it's about prioritizing those those important yeah. things in your mind but people know to do that and more to your point before you were speaking about what do you do yeah. it's managing the reaction we have in that situation that is literally the difference here if yeah. you want to be able to be present with your family prioritize what's important to you you've got to manage the reactions you have when you're placed in pressure uh in situations that uh trigger stress response right and to manage that reaction comes down to clearing the intrusive thoughts in your mind the people in your mind there's little men and women with the megaphone yelling at you to you don't deserve to rest you're not enough um oh look at you screwed up again feel guilty about that you don't deserve this x y and z whatever those intrusive thoughts are 
in the form of either um, worry-based thoughts, like I talked talk to you about, the fear-based thoughts, the guilt, the, the resentment, yep. or those decision-making thoughts, oh, what task do I have to do next? Oh, which one do I prioritize? What decision do I, am I making the right decision? What if I make a mistake? These are the things that are swimming around in people's minds. They're, those thoughts are founded on limiting beliefs that this person holds about themselves and the world around them. Therefore, the root of all of these challenges is the beliefs that we hold. If they are limiting us, they will feed intrusive thoughts. Those intrusive thoughts will cause our mind to race. Yep. Our mind racing will heighten our nervous system, keep it in a survival state, a stress state. And then we will operate in life from that place. And we will feel like we have to grind, have to push, have to keep moving forward. And we can't stop. Right. And so that's the process. So really the root of it, to answer your question, is dealing with those limiting beliefs. Uh, what what if I make a mistake? What if I can't do this? What if my what if I say X and my boss yells at me? What if I look stupid? What if I look foolish? What if I'm not enough? Yeah, uh, that's important. And uh, so, what 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 would be your advice to these people or aspiring leaders to mitigate these intrusive thoughts? Medicate was it? Mitigate, yeah. Remove. Yeah, mitigate, things. mitigate. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, obviously that's where I coach people. I actually take people through a mindset process to uh, clear these thoughts and I put it in three steps, right? But people can try and apply this themselves, obviously. The first is to identify uh, the limiting beliefs that are holding you back, um, being able to catch them. Um, and once you catch them, um, you're able to, you have to be able to pull them out of the root as well. So it's about it comes down to questioning why you behave the way you behave. So when you've got a challenge, for example, you're burnt out. Yeah. Um, what are the intrusive thoughts that are swimming around in your head that are responsible for the burnout that you're experiencing in your life? Yeah. And then what are the beliefs that are underpinning those thoughts? Um, like where has this thinking come from? Um, why do I, why do I have that thought? Why do I think it? Yeah. And that's obviously part of my mastery is helping people unpack that to get to the root and the truth of what they believe. Um, and then assessing, is this actually healthy for me to believe about myself or about the world? Once you once you address that and get to the truth of like, hey, this is not serving me anymore. The second step is about replacing those old limiting beliefs, the new empowering ones. So reframing your thinking, right? Now, a quick, a quick 30 second exercise practically people can do, right, is whenever you catch a, a thought that's coming up in your head that feels a bit like intrusive or like negative or limiting, get a note on your phone write it down have a running list of these thoughts in the second column you start to write an empowering belief in place of that one okay so what if i fail or what if i fly what if i make a mistake what if i get this right what if i um am not enough what if i am enough and then starting to answer those questions for yourself too. go down the train of thought of, hey what if i am enough oh if i am enough that means it doesn't matter um, whether I um, do a bit more extra work over time to like please my boss. Um, I actually can just take a break. And it's starting to reinforce that kind of thinking in your head. It takes a long time to do it that way because that's an external solution. Obviously, you're writing it on paper. It's a bit of an exercise. Yeah. Um, but doing doing that over time and keeping that list and keep on coming back to it every time the new thought, that same thought pops up and reading what's the opposing thinking starts to reinforce new new neural pathways very slowly, but it does it. Yeah. Um, so first step, removing those weeds, removing those limiting beliefs. The second step is about planting seeds in your brain, um, yeah. new empowering beliefs in its place. And then the third step is about nurturing those new empowering beliefs to form into that new rest-based mindset, and that rest-based approach to your life. Yeah. Um, sure. It's taking you out of survival and like, into the growth that we spoke about. And nurturing looks like, um, over a period of time, just reinforcing the belief over and over and over again, these new ones in your mind, like starting to think about it, starting to practice it in your life. Like, what does it look practically to believe this? Like, if I believe this thought, this belief, like, how does that translate into action in my life? How do I schedule that action into my to-do list, into my calendar to make it a part of my schedule? So I have a values aligned calendar based on the positive and empowering beliefs I want to have in my life. Yeah. See, so yeah, now obviously this again, this is a process I help people through. Um, and if people ever want to um talk to me further about these things, they can hit me up on LinkedIn. I can always um look at their specific situation and just talk to them about it as well. But if people want to do this in their own way, I think that's the best approach. Um, just identifying those things. 
Um, another cool exercise I see that you can do around letting go of control, because this is it also underpins a lot of the problems that people have here is trying to control everything in the external environments because they're not in control of their thoughts or their emotions, right? Um, it's a cool one that I heard online actually, and I've been using it. Um, every time, uh, every day, you can write a list of the things you're worried about, feel guilty about, frustrated about, all of that. Yep. Um, with the things that are in your control, um, sorry, the things that are out of your control, put a line through it or discard it. And that acknowledges to you, hey, it's not in your control. Leave that up to life to solve, okay? Um, for the things that are in your control, next to it, write an action. Okay, if this is in my control, what's the next step? Just writing that very next step, schedule that into your to-do list. That goes into your plan for the week. Um, and that actually gets you to take action on things you can't control. And it keeps you wired to thinking, hey, like, there's only things that I can control here. I'm very conscious of what they are. And the things that are out of my control, I leave up to life. Um, that's all you can do, um, unless you can tell me otherwise, Sarish. But that's what I'm. That's what I've seen. No, that that is pretty much that. For my personal experience too, that is literally. Yeah. What you, do. you know, I have been. Um, well, you know, school is hard. Um, you know, you um do have to deal with a lot of toxic people, and uh, with that, um, you know, there's this person that did tell me about this. Um, I, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be watching soon. He is a teacher. Um, his name is Majid Hussain. And he basically told me about this too. So we we're speaking about it a while ago. And he said that, um, you know, there are things you can and cannot control. And what you can control is what you should act on and what you should and what you can't, you know, like, when, like you know, and what you can't control, you know, just let go. You know, you have to forget about it and focus on what you can control, what you can really make a change on, whether that's your behavior, yeah. your action, your mindset, that is what you need to focus on what you yeah. can control someone else's behavior that's something you're going to just have to naturally learn to deal with you're just naturally going to learn how to approach this um how to deal with such kind of people and that, you know that experience is going to build up and it's going to get better but what you can control is what you should focus on now which will eventually pay off greatly yeah um on, on that point you just made i believe you can there's things that you can't control but you can influence too and that's so if you're talking about for example, people that are difficult for you to deal with or you've experienced as challenging, right? And I think, especially when it comes to people that are difficult to navigate or talk to, um, I deal with a lot of professionals who there's a person in the office that they struggle to deal with or they find annoying or they're just not able to crack through or whether they're, they're leading them or whether they're um, like doing work for them, right? Yeah. And in terms of influence, I find um, that there is a method to being able to influence your environments yeah. Um, that starts with uh, you, right? For one, if you're, again, pointing the finger at yourself, doing the internal work, that does influence your external environment. It starts to shift reality. Now, sometimes it's not as obvious for people um, or like tangible, but that's why I've taken an approach of like work on myself first and let life like flow from there. Because yeah. you can, I've found even people that were like once very critical towards me or like um, were like uh, playing on my insecurities and things like that when I was younger, um, over time, as I started to work on myself, as I started to step more into who I was as a person, yeah. um, began to respect me. Um, and I was like, wait, what's changing in the attitude? I didn't tell them to do anything and things like that. It was actually, they can feel within me what's changed within me. The insecurity is no longer there. I've worked on myself. Yeah. Um, I've also been graceful in the face of adversity, of their, of their hate, of their of their just not niceness at times and things like that. And I continue to be loving and that's because that's who I choose to be, right? Yeah. Not to judge, um, but to understand that be in being a human in this world, if you're really standing for something as a leader, uh, you're going to have to take the hit sometimes. You're going to have to take the fall and take it gracefully. Um, and um, there's a lot of people that it, big leaders in the world who've taken the hit, they've even died for their cause, right? Um, and that's because that's what leadership is kind of about, dying to yourself, almost to kind of yeah. um, let life happen through you so that you can lead by example yeah. um, and show people who are like hurling uh, dirt at you that the dirt just washes off you. That's the place you want to get to. Yeah. Um, and that you respond with love or with compassion or with kindness or with boundaries, right, which is also important. Um, getting that balance of being compassionate and having your boundaries in place at the same time when dealing with people can be the ultimate influence it almost confuses people. It's like, hey, I treat everyone else like this and look at the way they've responded in return. They've retaliated, they've gotten angry, they've gotten hurt, all of this stuff. But this person remains calm. 
What is it about that person that remains calm no matter what's thrown at them? And personally, for me, even running this business, I've had I've had hate uh, hurled at me. I've had people say certain things about me. I've heard in the background. I've also had thousands and thousands of people support me. But there's always going to be those people who have something to say because of their own insecurities, their own projections, their own yeah. place. There are they are in their own life, right? And an analogy I've heard that's really good about this one is if you think of your own mountain of success, we all have one, right? This yeah. mountain of success that we're trying to climb throughout our lives. In the beginning of the climb, quite often we're just trying to learn how to climb the mountain, how to like put the pick in the mountain, trying to like find our footing, we're slipping, we're falling. We look pretty foolish in the beginning when we start anything that's new, a new skill, a new uh, pursuit. Yeah. Now, what happens is as somebody attempts to climb their own mountain, suddenly people will start to gather, will start to look around the bottom, the base of the mountain to watch what, what this person is doing because a lot of people aren't climbing their own mountain. They're watching what other people are doing and climbing theirs, right? And then there are the people that are climbing the mountain and giving it a go. The people that are at the base often ridicule, mock, say they can't do this. Who do they think they are? Blah, 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 right? When they try to step into leadership or yeah. try to start the climb. And... The biggest part for anybody trying to make something of their life, trying to step into their real selves, trying to um, find their purpose. Oh, sorry, man, you froze? Um, no, I think um, you froze from here. Ah, you're frozen on the... Oh. Let me see. Okay, you just came back. Oh, okay, you too. Wow. Um, not... Yeah, so I was saying... Yes, so I was saying for anybody who's trying to start the climb into leadership, into purpose, into success... You've got to be able to navigate um, the the stuff that people will hurl at you and not make it mean anything about you. You have because that's the first part. This is where people give up early. If, if there's enough yeah. being hurled at them because of their own insecurities, their own um, judgments, and all of that, then people usually give up. And I did that in the start of my journey, where people would say something and then I wouldn't act for a year or more. I remember somebody said something about like my Instagram earlier on, um, like a, even a good friend of mine and just made a comment and was laughing about it. I didn't post again for a year after that. And that was because I cared too much about what people thought. This is very early on in my journey before I started this company, right? Um, and I used to put so much weight on what people thought about me, seeking approval um, yeah. and getting my self-worth from other people's opinions. And that is the goal when you're trying to step into leadership. How do I let go of what other people think of me? Um, fix and and heal what I think of myself, the self-identity, yeah. so that even when people are hurling these things, I'm like, yes, but it's not true because this is what I feel about myself, right? And this is the journey for all human beings. How do we step into the world, step into our true selves, take off the mask, show people the real us, what we want to stand for, um, and do it gracefully while people are hurling their stuff at us yeah. because they don't see other people doing what they're not. Yeah. I mean, uh, there are going to be people that, um, you know, that never grow up. There are always going to be people that never see the new side of you um, because of immaturity. Um, but regardless of what you said, you know, you're going to have to wash out that dirt that they keep on throwing at you and going keep on going forward, you know, managing yeah. these situations effectively for what you can and cannot control and influencing them for your benefit or other people's benefits too, whoever are in the, you know, a similar yeah. environment or in the same boat, you know, that face you know, a similar circumstance. Come yeah, on. I'll give you a communication tool here that this is something that I teach a lot of professionals, right? So um, basically, when it comes to somebody you're finding it difficult to, to talk to, somebody who's got their walls up, their guards up, they're in defense, um, I find people are often communicating in a way that is what I call transactional versus authentic, right? And then, therefore, the communication doesn't cut through. Transactional communication looks like you're trying to voice your needs and opinions, then that person responds by trying to voice theirs. And it's like a ping pong battle of like, I want you to hear what matters to me right? Um, it's like, hey, like, I want this work done by 5pm today. That's what your boss says to you. And then you respond in return. Yeah, but like, I want to do x, y, and z. Like, I've got all these other things to do. I can't do that. And then your boss is like, yeah, but my opinion is this, like, I think you can do it. And for x, y, and z reasons, until the person who holds the most power, quote, unquote, ends up winning out in that conversation. And then one person ends up resentful, right? Yeah. The way authentic communication looks like, um, for example, if the boss puts the work on your desk, says get it done by 5 p.m., um, 
you actually start asking curious questions being like, oh, okay, so like you want the work done by 5 p.m. I do have X, Y, and Z on, but um, why is it important for it to get done by then? And starting to get understand why it's important for them to have their needs met, right? Basically, if you can get people to a point where they feel fully seen, heard, and understood for their opinion, for their needs, um, that actually helps people let their guard down, right? And this is, this is communication 101, right? If you're able to put your needs and opinions aside just to ask questions, just to listen first, to fully get the full picture, relay it back to that person and say, "Am I so am I understanding X, Y, and Z is correct, like based on what you're saying? And they say yes. That's an indicator to me to then share my opinion, my needs. I'm like, oh, I hear, okay, now I get the full picture. Um, but here's like what I need. But people try to just get what they need straight away without actually taking the time to listen yeah, first, like, uh, yeah. get the full picture. Yeah, like you said, you know, you just need to step back a bit, slow down, because not everyone, well, not everyone's going to be at the same pace at you, uh, you know, so you just need to step back a bit, slow down for them, you know, level your, uh, you know, let's, let, level your wavelength for what you're communicating at, uh, which is by understanding the picture first and then coming up with a solution uh, together, which both of you are happy with, uh, oh, you know, which yeah. creates good culture in, in the company. Yes, there are times which you need to be more assertive, you know, there are those scenarios, but in general, to because, you know, if you consistently do this, that assertiveness can be well, you know, ignored a lot of the time because we know that, yes, that is urgent, but we know that this person always hears us out, always has, you know, his, um, you know, always lets us express our opinions and thoughts on why this is or why this is not. So if this person is a bit more certain now, it might be really important. So, you know, just cut him a bit of slack or, you know, be a bit more understanding at the same time, you know, uh, feeding back into that relationship that you do have. Hmm. Yeah, no, well said. I think um, uh, it, Active listening goes a long way. Active listening, yes. Yeah, yeah. that is is the term, right, that is practiced out there. And if you're able to actively listen first, chances are people are going to be more willing to listen to you in return. What actually gains the respect is giving people that that sense that you fully see, hear, and understand, and that should always be the goal in any interaction. And if you can yeah. do that, that actually leads to influence down the line. Um, and another one on this as well, being liked versus being respected, because I was talking about climbing the mountain of success, right? Um, a lot of people do things to be liked. I used to be criminal at this, yeah. um, but a lot of people don't realize um, when they think they're, they're trying to earn respect, it's actually just to get liked in return, right? And so people will do things for people because it's like, hey, if I do this for you, then you'll like me. And then if you and then if you like me, you will respect me. But oft, quite often, what happens is the boundaries keep getting pushed. Hey, if I just keep giving up my boundaries to please you, yeah. um, uh, you'll keep pushing the boundary a little by little by little. And suddenly, the boundaries are so blown out. Like five years into the future, we're like, how do we even get here? It's yeah. so easy for you to take advantage of me. I am so resentful of this circumstance. But yeah. that's what because people are trying to trade um, short term likability for long term respect, and they don't realize they're doing it. And yeah. what actually earns the respect um, is um, stating your needs clearly um, and, and being able to communicate that without being afraid of uh, the repercussions of it, yeah. actually bringing your needs to the table, right? But again, actively listen first, hear what people have to say, then bring your needs to the table. It's a, That's what actually earns people's respect, yeah. right? If you communicate in this way, and then that becomes more of an authentic communication where the other person's more willing to meet your needs, to hear you out, to do things for you because you did things for them first. You listened first. You respected them first. You um, acknowledged them first. And that's all people really want. You yeah. understand that about humanity, about humans. Um, it gives you a lot of power in terms of being able to influence um situations. And suddenly people start wanting to do things for you little by little. Now, this it takes time is yeah, the problem. It yeah, it, does, it, right? does. it takes People might not respect respect you in the beginning, um, especially if you've been someone like me who was doing a lot of things to be liked by other people. Um, to try and I undo that identity in people's minds takes work because it's like, hey, but you were this person. Now you're trying to be this person. I feel unsafe seeing this, um, especially when I started to put myself out there. That could trigger a lot of people who knew, once knew me uh, in a certain way. Yeah. Um, but now the more and more and more I stay consistent with it, which is something you pointed out at the start of the call, the more you stay consistent, you work hard and people can start to see and trust that this is the you going forward. And this is the person that you are going to be. The respect eventually comes from the right people and the wrong people or the people who just don't want to go along the journey, don't want to look at themselves in the same way, will just inherently drop off. Yeah, that's true. You wouldn't have to do anything about it. You just got to keep growing forward because that's who you want to be. Yeah.
yeah, so to basically just wrap up, you know, you're going to have to keep on pushing forward, you know, uh, results take time. And uh, yeah, you're going to make mistakes, you're uh, going to have your ups and downs, you're going to have to stick with the people that uh, have always been there for you, regardless if you are in your high or whether you're in your low, you have to keep on moving forward, learning from where you went wrong, you know, constantly just trying to improve yourself, your mindset, the way you think, the way you approach something. And uh, yeah, relationships are going to be difficult, but um, you're just going to learn to manage them, control what you can, uh, and uh, forget about what you can't and influence the best you can um, by being that, you know, model that you want to be leading by example. And, you know, eventually you are going to get to the stage that you want to, but uh, it just boils down to patience. It's going to take time, but you're going to have to put in that effort. And, um, you know, so for anyone who is out there, you know, please feel free to reach out to Passion via LinkedIn. Um, I'm pretty sure he'll be more than happy to answer any questions or doubts and will more than be happy to you know, uh, bring you on board as a client or anything like that. I'll have his LinkedIn down in the description for you. And otherwise, Hushin, it's been an absolute pleasure hosting you here today. 